We the people believe these truths. God is the creator of everything. Yes, everything. Earth and sky. What is below and what is beyond. All that we see moving. And even those things we don't see. God created it all. And we believe that God created humans. All of us. And we are all created equal in the sight of God. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he was conceived by the Holy Spirit and was born of a virgin. We believe that he suffered under Pontius Pilate and was crucified, died, and was burned. But we believe that was not the end. We believe he rose again, and when he did, he ascended to heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father. We believe that all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. And we believe that there is forgiveness for our sins through Jesus. We believe that he has called each of us to live a life worthy of his name, a life of sacrifice. What is this life? It's a life of love and truth and grace. A life that speaks by actions as much as words. A life that is marked by His life. And we believe that God is here with us now because we are His church. And this is our creed. Good morning, 19th Street Baptist Church. I'm Reverend James Harris, youth and young adult pastor. And I'm here to bring you news on the street. This is the day that the Lord has made and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship in person and online. Praise God. April is National Minority Health Month. This annual observance builds awareness about the health disparities that persist among racial and ethnic minorities. Black Maternal Health Week is April 11th through the 17th. This Tuesday, April 16th, is the District of Columbia Emancipation Day holiday. The church office will be closed on Tuesday, April 16th. Transformation Tuesday night Bible study is from 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Zoom. The next class is April 16th. Come and be transformed. The next church business meeting is this Friday, April 19th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. The Zoom information will be forwarded to church members. So please be on the lookout. Church business meeting this upcoming Friday, April 19th. Church, family, and friends, come for an afternoon of good old-fashioned gospel music on this Saturday, April 20th, beginning at 2 p.m. in the sanctuary. This program is sure to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Former members of 19th Street uh, Gospel Choir are reuniting for a spirited afternoon of joyous music. You are invited. Please put this on your calendar. Please come out. If you were a part of the Gospel Choir, um, please let people know. Maybe they're not at the church anymore. This could be a great time for you all to have a reunion. Just have them come out. We would love to see you in the building. So again, Saturday, April 20, 20th, we will be having the former members of the 19th Street uh, Gospel Choir reuniting for a spirited afternoon of joyous music. I promise you, you don't want to miss it, Gospel Choir members. Next Sunday, April 21st, is the Fruit of the Spirit Ministry. Um, they will be hosting the third annual celebration with the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Coleman Hall as the worship service preacher. The celebration theme is the heart of Christian living, walk by the Spirit, led by the Spirit, live by the Spirit. Galatians 5, 16, 18, and 25. Immediately after the service, the congregation will move to the Brooks Chapel to rededicate the recently renovated space. Praise God. You are invited to the rededication ceremony for the Brooks Chapel. 
the chapel name for legendary 19th Street pastor. Reverend Dr. Walter Henderson Brooks has recently undergone renovations and is reopening for special meetings, weddings, and other programs. After the rededication ceremony, we welcome you to join us in the Wyatt A. Fellows James Fellowship Hall for reception. All are encouraged to attend. So please come out. Dear women, add your voice to the Women's Day Choir. We are looking for you, you and you, and looking forward to an exciting exciting Women's Day worship service, and you can be a part. We invite and encourage you to join the sisters in raising your voice and song with the Women's Day Choir. Our special guest will be Professor Latanya Wren. Rehearsal will be Saturday 27th at 11 a.m. Join us. Also on April 27th is Jazz on the Lawn. I know it's going to be a vibe. I cannot wait. From 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., our featured artists will be Craig Austin and Friends. Plan to have a musical afternoon with us. In case of inclement weather, we will enjoy the musical sounds while in the fellowship hall. Women's Day, sponsored by the Missionary Society, is April 28th. This year's theme is equipped to serve through the power of the Holy Spirit. The supporting scripture for the theme is Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. Reverend Dr. Zena Jaki, assistant to the pastor for small groups at Alfred Street Baptist Church in Alexandria, Virginia, is our guest preacher for Women's Day worship service. We will kindly request that women wear white on Women's Day. We also, with hopeful hearts, encourage each one, to donate $50 to help support the various mission obligations of the Missionary Society. See you on April 28th. From Labor to Reward, a celebration of life memorial service for Deacon Raymond C. Grandy Johnson Sr. will be held Tuesday, April 30th, 2024. Family visitation will be from 9 a.m. until 10.30 a.m. The service will begin at 11 a.m. promptly. In lieu of flowers, the family requests contributions to be made to the 19th Street Baptist Church Progressive Adults Ministries. Thank yous. I express sincere appreciation to all of my family, friends, and church members for assisting in the clothes closet and flourish and in flourishing under the leadership of the Jarvis Memorial Club. Thanks for your helping um, our church to continue to help others who are in need. Uh, donations and volunteers are always welcome. Items can be dropped off at the church office. Any suggestions or questions can be forwarded to Deacon Sandra Keaton Brown. Thank you. You do such a marvelous job and we are blessed because of your ministry. We are so very grateful for the love and support you showed to us during this difficult time. It is it was deeply appreciated and will always be remembered. Thank you from the family of Sister Lorraine, German Ivy, Motina, Jamis, and grandchildren. Are you moving? Have you moved? Please remember to notify and update the church with your new address and phone number by sending an email to office at 19streetbc.org. Again, that's office at 19streetbc.org or calling the office at 202-829-2773. That number again is 202-829-2773. Thank you for your cooperation. We extend our thanks and appreciation to Brother John Jackson for planting the flowers that are now in the planters on the front of the church. Thank you so much for this labor of love. We are blessed because of your work. We give God all the honor, the glory, and the praise. It is time for worship. I love each and every one of you all, and there's nothing you can do about it. Let's have church. but I'll share it with you uh, within the joy of the Lord. Lead me in the way everlasting. And this is Psalm 139, 24 from the King James Version of the Bible. If you look in your hymnal uh, when they are available, you'll see normally a scripture that will accompany the hymn. 
This is a lead into the meaning and to the body of uh, what the hymn is trying to convey to you. And this morning, in preparation for devotion today, I came across a hymn that I think would sum up our prayer meeting on Thursday. Many struggles of life and toils and tribulation. There were themes of joy, themes of happiness, themes of uh, transparency and authenticity. There was th were themes of loneliness for some people and overwhelm for some people. So I submit to you this morning a hymn that is very dear to me and I think that will be very dear to this church savior. Like a shepherd lead us, much we need thy tender care. And thy pleasant pastures feed us, for our use thy foals prepare. We are thine, do thou befriend us, be the guardian of our way. Keep thy flock from sin, defend us, seek us when we go astray. Let us bow for prayer. Lord God, our Father, we come to you this morning as humbly as we know how, giving you thanks, giving you all the glory, giving you the praise. Lord, this is a deep time of contrition for so many people, a deep time of contemplation for so many people, and we submit the care and the concerns to you this morning, O oh Father. We know that you have everything in your hand. And Lord, sometimes we are just not excited to go about the task that you put before us. Give us strength, give us meaning, give us hope, give us wisdom to navigate the murky waters of this world. But Lord, more importantly, give us the grace to be obedient to your word, to be obedient to get up and show up anyhow, because you'll meet us there. And for this, we give you praise. So as we go into worship this morning, we open our hearts, we open ourselves to you. We pray for the associate ministers of this church. We pray for all of the auxiliaries and all of the boards and everything here at 19th Street that makes us a branch of Zion pleasing to you. So Lord, give us strength as we run this race and as we go into service. We pray this prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Did anyone come to lift up the Lord today? Did anyone come to lift up the Lord? For he is worthy of all of the praise and all of the glory and all of the honor. We ask that you stand with us as we lift up our morning hymn this morning, which is just simply entitled, Lift Him Up. Amen.
and put your hands together. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless. Did anybody come to bless the Lord? Bless the Lord with me. to take over this sanctuary. Let it be none of us, but all of you. We ask that bodies are healed, people are delivered and set free, and people are saved in this worship experience. We'll continue to give your name all the honor, the glory, and the praise. Come on and bless the Lord with me, 19th Street. Hallelujah.
to welcome our virtual family online. And also, if you're a visitor, please stand right now. The ushers have something for you. If you'll take a moment to fill it out. And once you complete it, put it in the offering plate at the end of service or once the, we do the offering. So right now, our uh, choir has something special for you, or we all have something special for you. We'd like to welcome you today. This is Mighty Street. We are a family, and we are happy. This is the place you chose to be. Here we worship, we dance, we praise and sing. We are happy to have you here at continue to move through this service just want to say may God continue to bless all those who are here this morning amen just have a few announcements I want to make with just one just want to say that we have a special guest uh, his name is Bob Tansy and I just want to say one thing about Bob Tansy I've, I've met him several times that he's a person who is I would say he's like a true humanitarian. Uh, I've worked with him on several pro projects in Washington, D.C., especially in the Petworth, Brightwood area. And uh, he's been very effective uh, of bringing different types of programs and uh, being able to invest. Here I said, he also invests in the people that he, he works with, not just in his time, but he actually writes checks. Amen. You heard what I said? He writes checks, so he doesn't just talk about it. He puts his finances behind it. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to uh, invite uh, Bob Tansy. He's the co-founder of uh, Brightwood and Petworth Community Association. And he would just like to share a couple of words with you about adopting McFarland Junior High School and some of their program needs uh, Cause someone escort him to the podium so he can talk about this program, Bob Tans. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, everybody. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> I uh, grew up in New Jersey and Toledo, Ohio, and came to D.C. in 1969 when I was 18 years old, and I had careers that took me all around the world, but I just kept coming back to D.C. area and, and uh, moved to uh, 7th and Ingraham at the end of 2015. And uh, in more recent years, I've had the uh, great joy of getting to uh, know Reverend Crawford as my friend. We have walked the streets together. We have tried to reach out to uh, youth. Our youth need a lot of uh, support and uplifting in some cases. Amen. And Amen. Thank you. I, I was moved while I was sitting here as, as things were warming up and <laughs> to uh, hear the words, they will know you by your actions. So what we're thinking, what we're saying, what we're doing, that's uh, really important, it makes a difference. And so anyhow, I'm, I'm very pleased that after some months of uh, deliberation that the Brightwood Petworth Community Association on May 4th in the afternoon, that's a Saturday from three till six, is gonna uh, be organizing a kickoff in the 700 block of Kennedy Northwest to adopt the McFarland Middle School to to do whatever folks can. You know, maybe be a mentor, maybe be a tutor, maybe you have special knowledge, you can come and be a guest speaker, maybe 
uh, I'll write a check, but uh, maybe some people write checks because the, the, the music teacher is trying to start up a band. Not everything's covered by the, the budget. And I, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. We'll all, all different kinds of folks will show up on the block that day, May 4th, uh, 3 to 6 in the afternoon, and, and we'll uh, hopefully kick off something that is lasting, and you all are warmly uh, welcome to participate, to engage, and I'm going to leave some uh, short flyers here on the podium for anyone's interest uh, afterward. Thank you all again. Uh, thank you, Reverend Crawford. Thank you so much. Uh, just also, I want to mention that a Bob will be uh, flying out, uh, going to China, um, I think next week or the week after. So let's continue to pray for traveling mercies as he continue his humanitarian uh, trip. Amen. Good morning again. Um, we continue in worship by cheerfully giving our tithes and offerings. I want to be a cheerful giver. At this time, please turn your attention to the instructions on the screen that provide details about how you are able to contribute to our church. You may give privately and securely on the church's website 19streetbc.org using PayPal, Cash App with the church's cash tag, dollar sign 19th Street, or Give La Fly. You may also mail your offering to 19th Street Baptist Church, 4606 16th Street, Northwest Washington, D.C., 20011. Or for our congregants in the congregation, and my ushers will be coming forward momentarily. And for our virtual congregation, we're not leaving you out. We thank you for your support. And please put your prayer requests in the chat for us. Ushers, please come forward. As we continue in our giving, we would like to feature a selection by our very own Story Denton. Please be blessed. Put your hands together. Amen.
ushers, please come forward. says that all good gifts come from you and we give a portion of what you've given us back to your church God help us to use it for your purpose in this household of faith and in the community and across the globe lead us father as we serve you and your great purpose it's in Jesus name we pray amen let us sing the doxology together to pray for the church family, the ones who are on the list, the ones who we need to keep in mind as we are one family under Christ. So now I'm going to um, say the names on the list as we know that they need um, prayer. We lift in prayer Sister Sateria Tony, who had a procedure last week. We lift in prayer Brother John Gamble, who is in the hospital. We lift in prayer the Woolwich family, Brother Randy, Sister Carolyn, and Brothers Daniel and Jonathan. We lift in prayer Sister Roxana Bilal's son, Awad, who is improving from a severe asthma attack. We also continue to lift in prayer Sister Teresa Proctor, Sister Ali, Charlie Ali, excuse me, Deaconess Pearl Sudith and family, Sister Debbie Davis and family, and Sister LaVon Johnson and family. So let's gather our spirits as this prayer time. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. As we gather here on this Sunday, we come before you with open hearts and spirit ready to receive your grace and healing touch. Today, we lift up those on this list and those who did not make participants publicly known and those currently among us who need to feel your love. 
Lord, we know that you are the great physician who heals our bodies and comforts our souls. We ask you to bring peace and to let your love be a balm and source of hope. Lord, we also pray for the world. It's so full of hate and full of destruction. And we ask you to help us help the world not to fall into the traps of war. We pray for what's happening here domestically in our city. Help the youth to seek and find you and surround them with people who will help them fulfill in their purpose for their lives. We thank you for the many things that you bless us with. And we also do not forget to pray for those with needs. In this altar call, it's a time for brothers and sisters of Christ to come before the throne in agreement and stand in our faith, trusting you. We thank you for the opportunity to come before you and to have the privilege in knowing that you are always near and you always hear our prayers. We thank you, we love you, and continue to bless us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. morning again. Um, just before we stand for the prayer, can we just keep Sister Tiana Drumgo and her children um, in prayer, um, specifically her son um, Malachi. So I am uh, reading the scripture on her behalf. Um, if you're able, please stand in reverence to the reading of God's word. If you have your paper Bible, your smart device, um, pull that out, <laughs> or you're more than welcome to follow on the screen. I'll be reading um, Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 19, and I'll be reading from the New International Version. This is where Ab Abraham is tested. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain, I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he sent out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here while the don with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he carried himself, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here. Isaac said, Ooh. Mm. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. I'm sorry. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar 
and on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld me from your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in, the, in a thicket, he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Then Abraham returned to his servants and they set off together for Beersheba and Abraham stayed in Beersheba. There is a word this morning. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word. After this selection, we will hear the sermonic message, There's Something in the Bush, from our very own Reverend James Harris, youth and young adult pastor. Speak Lord.
lifter of your head stand all over the building and begin to worship our king in the fifth verse of this text it said they worship come on let's worship 19th street for the lifter of our head it's in the moments of worship that cancer dries up it's in the moments of worship that deliverance takes place it's in the moments of worship that God does something on the inside of us Father God, we thank you for being the lifter. Father God, we thank you for being the lifter. Father God, we thank you for being the lifter. Thank you for being the lifter of our heads. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. It's preaching time, saints. I'm going to go through the text one more time just because it makes me a little bit more comfortable. I thank God for all of the young adults that are on the pulpit this morning. Look at what God is doing in the midst of 19th Street Baptist Church. We're so thankful. So, so thankful. I won't read the enti entirety of the text, but we're going back to Genesis, the 22nd chapter, the first through the 19th verse. Starting with the third verse, early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son, Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servant, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there and we will worship and then come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but there is a lamb, but there is no lamb for the burnt offering. Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son, and the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on the top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out for him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld your son, your only son. Abraham looked up there in the thicket and he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said on the mountain of the Lord, it, it, it will be provided. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity to give your name all the honor, the glory, and the praise. Father, I ask that you would lower me and that you would only be the one exalted in this experience on this morning. Let it be none of me and all of you. Father, you know what your people are in need of on this morning. It is my prayer that you would give them exactly what they need. Before the words even escape my lips, Father God, I ask that you would wrap it in your anointing and your Holy Spirit so that the people and their hearts will be able to receive 
It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If I were to title this sermon, I would give it the title, It's in the Bush. We have all been tested at some point in our lives. We are tested by people we love, people we could care less for, our professors, our teachers, our parents, our children, our friends, our enemies, our neighbors, the driver in the car next to us, a server at the restaurant. Don't worry, I'm coming down everybody's street, our co-workers, our emotions. We're tested by life. We're tested through loss. We're tested by gains. We're tested by our fears, by the things that bring us joy. We're tested by the devil, and we're also tested by God. Yes, you heard correctly, we are also tested by God. There is no way that you can go through this journey of life without being tested. Some tests are expected, some tests come up in the most inopportune times, some come up at the worst times imaginable, and some come during the celebration of a victory of the last test. Some come when we feel we can finally take a breather. Some tests last for a moment. Some tests last for days. Some tests last for a few months. Some tests last for a season. And some tests last for years. And other tests seem to last for a lifetime. But fortunately, there are times we have the opportunity to prepare for a test. But then, unfortunately, there are some times when a test will just pop up. Even during our times of testing, God has a way of showing up in our lives. Even though there are times when he allows us to go through difficult situations, God is always there. He's always working. Although God is there, we in our human state and mind are trying to figure out how to work things out on our own, trying to find a way to exhaust all of the possibilities. We have rationalized and analyzed our situation from every angle. But then just when we think the bad is over or coming, our situation does not get any better. But then God shows up. He reveals himself. And the promise is in the bush. This simple phrase that signifies that God provided and that Jehovah Jireh, our provider, has shown up. He's about to be in the midst. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Jehovah Jireh is about to show up in your situation. In this particular text, we find a man by the name of Abraham in the midst of a test. He finds himself in a test that put him in a compromising position. Just like we find ourselves in tests, we all will find ourselves in compromising positions. But what happens when you have found yourself in a compromising position with God? I can deal with compromising positions with my friends. I can deal with compromising positions with my family. I can deal with compromising being in a compromising position with a coworker, but it's another thing to be in a compromising position with God. God has asked Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. His son that had been waiting that he had been waiting on for years and years. His wife Sarah gave birth to Isaac at the ripe age of 90, and Abraham was 100. God promised Abraham that she would be the mother of nations and that she would conceive and bear a son. But Sarah did not believe to the point that she started to laugh. 
I don't know about you, but God has given me some promises. And when he said it, I can do anything but laugh. We find in Genesis 17, 16, Isaac was not only his son, but Isaac was a promise fulfilled. We are all living with some Isaacs in our lives. We are all living with fulfilled promises. Something we prayed for, something we fasted for, something we sacrificed for. While growing up living in the house with my cousins, you know, they would give me something. And then after a week, they would take it back. And I would think to myself, I thought you gave it to me. I thought it was mine. But, you know, during that time, we would call them Indian givers. You know about Indian givers. I wonder in that moment when God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac if he felt as if God was being an Indian giver. I don't know about you, but when someone gives me something and take it back after I've been loving and caring and thoughtful, my feelings are hurt. How could you do this to me? There are a few of you under the sound of my voice this morning who God is asking you to sacrifice your fulfilled promise. It hurts, I know, I know. You know why it hurts? You know why it hurts? Because you sacrificed. You did something different this time around. James, can I have you, bro? Can you come up for a second? Janiqua, can I have you? Can you come for a moment? Janiqua, yes. James, can you come up? Yes, bro. I need you over here. This is, this is Isaac. He represents the promise. He represents the promise. Let me see. Jalea, thank you. I need one more. Um, uh, 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 Cody, thank you, thank you. Now, Sometimes we try to treat God like we treat our earthly parents. And you remember as kids, you really, 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 really wanted something. So what you did, you said, you know what, Lord? You, you, know, you, you know what, Mom? You know what, Dad? I'm going to make sure I get straight A's this semester, okay? Not only am I going to get straight A's this semester, I'm going to make sure that I clean up my room every single day. I'm going to make sure that I take out the trash. Why? Because I'm making a sacrifice because there is something that I want from you. Okay. We got my sister right here. You represent prayer. You represent fasting. You represent reading the word of God. You represent faith. What do you represent? She represents prayer. So I've been praying. I've been fasting. I've been trusting God. I've been reading my word. For the Bible says men ought to always pray. So what am I doing? God, I'm praying. I'm getting up every morning at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I'm praying. And when you wake me up at 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm not going back to sleep, but I'm praying. I need this from you, God. I want this. Then, what do you represent, Cody? Fasting. For the Bible says some things only come through what? Fasting and praying. Now, fasting is not always giving up food. Fasting may be that conversation and that gossip on the phone when God has told you to shut your mouth. Fasting might be not spending that extra money on the clothing and the food because God wants to use that money to help put somebody through college. And you have a spirit of gluttony. But God is trying to get that out of you. So what do we do? We go and we fast. Because the Bible says some things can only come through fasting and praying. Jalea, what do you represent? Jalea says she represents reading the word. So what do we do? We get in our word. We get in our word. We read it. We get up early in the morning, we read it. We go to lunch. We're on our lunch break, we're reading the word. Before we go to bed at night, we're reading the word. We're trying to get something from God. And we're making a sacrifice 
because we are ready for God to give us something different. What do you represent, James? Faith. For the Bible says faith without works is dead. And so after you've fasted and after you've prayed and after you've been in the word, now you have to get up and operate in faith. But you know what? You're still having to make a sacrifice because you've worked so long. You've gone to school. You're raising your children. You're doing everything that you can do. But you're exhausted. You're tired. But you're making a sacrifice because you want God to do something different in your life. So you have Isaac. Stand here. Everybody surround Isaac. You're surrounded. God is giving you your promise. Your promise is right there because you've operated in faith, because you fasted, because you've read your word, and because you have continued to trust God. But after making the sacrifice, after praying, after fasting, after reading God's word, after operating in faith, the very thing that God gave you and promised you, he says to you now, you have to sacrifice it. What do you do when you have to sacrifice the very thing that you made a sacrifice for? Thank you all. You can go back to your seats. Isaac, stay here with me. So now, Abraham has to go back up the mountain with his promise. Now, I don't know about you. I would have thought in my mind, Lord, can we handle this down here in the valley? I don't understand why we got to go all the way back. Why we got to go up a mountain? I've already made the sacrifice. I've already struggled. I've already stayed up all night and prayed. I've already fasted. But he said, let's go up the mountain. Let's go up the mountain. And can you imagine what Isaac was thinking in his mind as he had to go up the mountain with his father? He said to his father, what, I see wood. I see fire. I see wood. I see fire, but I don't see the sacrifice. Where is the sacrifice? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to keep going up here? God, I have been on my face. I have been crying before you. I have been fasting, oh God. How can you take this from me? And it says in the Bible that he might have been about 12 years old. So could you imagine the trauma that Isaac was feeling in that moment as he had to go up the mountain with his father? Could you imagine the trauma and the sadness and the fear that he had to be experiencing in that moment as he walked up into the mountain? Thank you, Isaac. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what that would be like? But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there are two sides to a mountain. While Abraham was walking Isaac up one side of the mountain, God was preparing his miracle on the other side. There's always two sides to a mountain. Look at your neighbor and say it's in the bush. Point number one. The text shows us that your promise comes with provision. When we obey God, we will always place ourselves in circumstances that are beyond us. What is amazing is that Abraham understood this so well that he did not balk at God's request. He did not mope and cry all the way up the mountain. He spoke with great confidence to his servants. The lad and I will go and we will return. That was prophetic. That was a faith statement. He said, the lad and I will go but we will return. God will provide himself as a sacrifice. 
Abraham focused on the character of God, not the circumstances. Hebrew tells us that Abraham believed that God was able to raise him up in Hebrew 11, 17 through 19. Abraham did not understand why or how. He had the solution wrong. God worked in a way that Abraham did not expect. But did that matter? No. The fact is, Abraham was not worried about it at all. Abraham had a promise from God, which always ends with a provision from God. So it didn't matter what, in, what was in the in between the promise and provision, because God was going to solve the problem. God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. When you can't trace his hand, you can always trust his heart. For all that Abraham could see, there was so much more that he could not see. He did not see as he spoke to his servants, a ram had wandered from the flock on the other side. He did not know that as he told Isaac, God will provide that this ram was bounding from rock to rock in pursuit of a higher place. He did not see as he unloaded the wood for a sacrifice that the ram was trying to break through some thick shrubs in order to get some water. It was not until the knife was in the air that the angel stopped him and pointed out that there was a ram in the bush. But all the while God was at work on the other side of the mountain, it was not until Abraham was in the act of obedience that God allowed the ram to show up. Point number two, the ram in the bush symbolizes the power of God. The things God controls are endless. Not even a ram can deny its calling. God is the creator of the universe. We see it in the beginning of Genesis that God was the author of all creation. And we see his authority over nature once again in this story. That ram was placed by God to be an alternative sacrifice for Abraham. When Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac, he was trusting God. So much so that he did not bring an alternate for himself. But instead, God provided the alternate for Abraham. God placed the ram to be a provision, but also to be a symbol of God's power over all things. Nature yields to the will of God. We see this theme throughout Scripture, the stories of the Israelites crossing the Red Sea, Pharaoh's heart being hardened, and Jesus, Jesus, Jesus' resurrection are all examples of God's authority over nature in Scripture. Some people question God's power because of the tests that he puts people through. God's tests are not out of harshness, but they are used to develop us. Romans 8 and 28 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. It is clear that even God's tests are powerful tools that he uses to prepare us for life ahead. Point number three, faith will produce your ram. God tested Abraham's faith and willingness to obey by asking him to sacrifice his beloved son. The test aimed to display Abraham's unshakable commitment to God and his readiness to put God above everything, even his own desires. Abraham responded to God's command with unwavering faith and obedience. Despite the unimaginable pain it may have caused him, Abraham trusted God enough to proceed with the sacrifice. The ram in the bush carries several vital lessons for people of all walks of life. It teaches us about the importance of our faith, obedience, trust, and surrendering to God's divine plan. Putting our faith and trust in God during challenging and uncertain times, it reminds us that God is always in control and his plans are better than our own. During difficult times by reminding us of God's faithfulness and provision, it encourages us to maintain our trust in him regardless of what we're facing, knowing that he will always 
provide a ram in the bush. It's in the bush. Faith provides valuable lessons about resilience, surrendering to a higher power, and accepting divine guidance. There are two types of faith. One I call water-walking faith. It's the faith you have to use when you step out and trust God will make a way. Maybe it's a business you're starting. Maybe it's a house you're buying. Or maybe it's a college you're applying to that you know you're not qualified for. But then there is what I like to call situational faith. That's when you find yourself in situations that you did not ask God to put you in or even test you in. But regardless which faith journey you find yourself in, the scripture says in Hebrews 11:11, 11, 11, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. James 2 and 26, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so is faith without works. You have to do something. You have to take a step and allow God to do the rest. Well, I just came this morning to tell you there's a ram in the bush. It's in the bush. Your ability to trust God, it's in the bush. The ability to keep moving when everything is going haywire around, it's in the bush. The ability to pray when you don't want to pray, it's in the bush. Your prayer life can be found in the bush. Your deliverance can be found in the bush. Your new relationship in God can be found in the bush. All you got to do is trust God. All you got to do is believe God. All you got to do is walk in faith and know that it's in the bush. Your prayer life, in the bush. A new blessing and provision, it's in the bush. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor, it's in the bush. My deliverance is in the bush. My peace is in the bush. My joy is in the bush. It's in the bush. It's in the bush. It's in the bush. bush. The word of God for the people of God. I don't know about you this morning, but I've been in a season of making some serious sacrifices. And there are some things that God has asked of me that I don't want to give up. You know, we all get to a point where we feel like we've given up enough. I, I, I gave you that, God. I, I gave you that, God. I gave you that, too. You want some more? And this morning, God wants your yes. And as you walk up the mountain, Know that God is preparing something on the other side. The thing that I love about the story is he didn't end up having to sacrifice Isaac. Because God had something in the bush. And I don't know about you, but what I found in the bush is that during my season, during my season of fasting, during my season of praying, during my season of faith, there were some things that God took away from me. There were some desires that God took away from me because I didn't realize that I didn't even need it. I was praying and fasting and going before God because I was trying to get something, but God was trying to get something out of me. And he still, he still, allowed me to hold on to my Isaac. And then after he gave me my Isaac, there was something else in the bush. So the word of God for you this morning, as you go throughout this week, the Lord wants you to know that as you make this last sacrifice, 
this last sacrifice, that there's a ram in the bush. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. If you have found yourself in a place where you are needing God to do something different in your life, if you find yourself in a place where it's time to make another sacrifice, somebody this morning has been coming, visiting the church, and they may think to themselves, Oh, God, I don't want to make the sacrifice. I don't want to join another church. <laughs> I don't want to get involved in another ministry. The place I just came from, they wore me out. But God says, if you make this sacrifice, there's a ram in the bush. If you push a little bit further, there's a ram in the bush. There may be someone under the sound of my voice this morning that has not accepted Jesus as their personal savior. But today is the day. This is the moment. And I'll say yes. Yes, Lord, yes. The doors of the church are open. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. To your will. To your will. I'll say yes. I'll say yes. Lord, yes. I will trust you. I will Hallelujah. Trust you and when the Spirit, when the Spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, with my whole heart I'll agree. and my answer will be and yes. My answer will be yes. Lord, yes. Is there another this morning that has a yes? I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I'll trust you, I will trust you and obey. When the Spirit, when your Spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will, and my answer will. One more time, choir, one more time. I'll say yes. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. To your will. To your will and to your way. I'll say yes. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit, when your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart. With my whole heart. And my answer will, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. I want to make sure we have a saved house today. Romans, the 10th chapter and the 9th verse says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. And if you can just repeat after me, everyone, under the sound of my voice, Lord, thank you for your son. I confess and believe in my heart that you died on the cross and on the third day you rose again. I give you my heart. I give you my life. And I say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. I say yes, Lord. Yes. I will trust you. Lord, yes. and obey. I will trust you and when the obey. Spirit, when your Spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart, with my whole heart, I'll agree. and my answer, and my answer will be yes. Lord, Hallelujah! Yes. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Our brother has come on this morning. Hallelujah! Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And my answer will be yes,
Yes, praise the Lord. four people who are going to be baptized on the fourth Sunday. Four. Four. Praise the Lord. Now, last week, I introduced two of them as candidates, and this week, I'm going to inst introduce the other two. And Lord, you know what? This is the first time I think we've had twins in our church. Amen. Okay? So I'd ask, please, for Brother Tychus Ashby and Sister Olivia asked you to please come forward. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. You can go back to this. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask, please, that Sister Sakina Banks be come forward. Sister Banks. Praise the Lord. Amen. Look at the young people who are coming forward. The young people. We need, to make, we need to make room for the young people. Yes. Praise the Lord. It is a recommendation of the Board of Deacons that Sishkina Ashby, excuse me, Banks, be received into this body of Christ by experience of grace. And I so move. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. heard the motion. Will everybody in, in favor say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. She's going to receive her Bible today and a copy of our Constitution. So she'll know what to do. Praise the Lord. Yes. And you'll be receiving your, your membership certificate hours for this week. Thank you so much. God bless you. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and um, Reverend Hall has reminded me also, we're going to have two baby de dedications on the fourth Sunday. It's going to be a big Sunday. <laughs> Listen, we have four baptisms. Praise the God. We have two baby dedications. And we have Women's Day. <laughs> Praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. Praise the Lord. Reverend Robin has a Praise brief announcement Lord. before the benediction. Praise the Lord and thank God for all of his goodness. He says signs and wonders follow those who believe. And we thank God for the wonder and the new beginnings and the promise. A number of us had bought or pre-purchased books from Reverend Dr. Uh, Lakeisha Walren a few weeks ago, and those signed copies are available today, or if you would like to get a copy and you didn't get a chance to put in your order, there are uh, 
I should say, there is a limited supply, and you can meet with Reverend Edward Turner and myself in Fellowship Hall. God bless you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Did anybody get a word on this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. As you go throughout your week, remember, it's in the bush. It's in the bush. We will now have our benediction. Let the church say amen.
We the people believe these truths. God is the creator of everything. Yes, everything. Earth and sky. What is below and what is beyond. All that we see moving. And even those things we don't see. God created it all. And we believe that God created humans. All of us. And we are all created equal in the sight of God. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he was conceived by the Holy Spirit and was born of a virgin. We believe that he suffered under Pontius Pilate and was crucified, died, and was burned. But we believe that was not the end. We believe he rose again, and when he did, he ascended to heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father. We believe that all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. And we believe that there is forgiveness for our sins through Jesus. We believe that he has called each of us to live a life worthy of his name, a life of sacrifice. What is this life? It's a life of love and truth and grace. A life that speaks by actions as much as words. A life that is marked by his life. And we believe that God is here with us now because we are his church and this is our creed.